is your starting grid for today's Snowflake 100. Starting 36 outside row number 18 from Cedarville, Ohio. It's the number one of Ryan Fleming. Starting 35th inside row number 18 from Tennessee, the number 88 car of Boston Oliver. From Covington, Georgia, starting 34th outside row number 17, it's the number 47 of Dustin Bryson. Starting 33rd from Hernando, Florida, the number 69, Michael Hine. Starting 32nd outside row number 16 from Stockbridge, Georgia, the number 77 of Jensen Jorgensen. Starting 31st from the Pier, Michigan, the number 18 of Chase Burda. Starting outside road number 15 from Mobile, Alabama, the number 33 car of Dustin Smith. Starting 29th inside road number 15 from Umatilla, Florida, the number 29, I'm sorry, the number 9, Anthony Cataldi. Starting 28th outside row, number 14 from Pinellas Park, Florida. It's the number 51 car of Steven Nassie. Starting 27th inside row, number 14 from Maine. It's the number 39 car of Max Cookson. Starting 26th outside row, number 13 from Halifax, Virginia. The number 27 machine of Jeb Burton. From Mooresville, North Carolina. Starting 25th, driver of the number 15, it's Luke Baldwin. Out of Arizona, starting outside row number 12, driver of the number 11 machine, Dylan Capello. From Bridge City, Texas, starting 23rd inside row number 12. It's the 9-H of Caden Honeycutt. Starting 22nd outside row number 11 from Kannapolis, North Carolina. The number 54 machine of Matt Craig. Starting 21st inside row number 11. It's the 43 of Nick Loden. Out of Quincy, Washington, starting 20th outside row number 10. It's the number one of Casey Klein. Starting 19th inside row number 10 from Mobile, Alabama. The number 54 car of Grant Thompson. Starting 18th outside row number nine from Lakeland, Florida. It's the number 70 machine of Gavin Graham. Starting 17th inside row number nine from Denver, North Carolina. The number 24 of Brent Cruz. Out of Jackson, Tennessee, starting 16th. Driver of the number 33, it's Bryson Schaffer. Starting 15th inside row number eight from Madison, Alabama. The 91 machine belongs to Jim Wall. Champion here at Five Flags Speedway in the Allen Turner Pro League Model Series from Jasper, Alabama. The number two of John Bolin. Starting 13th inside row number seven from Wayland, Michigan. The number 18 machine of Terry Seneker. From Plant City, Florida, starting 12th outside row number six. The number 67 of Colin Allman. Out of New Hampshire, driver of the double zero, he starts 11th. It's Jimmy Renfrew, Jr. He is a three-time Snowflake 100 champion, a two-time Snowball Derby champion, 
from Hayden, Alabama, the number 43 machine, Augie Krill. Starting ninth, inside row number five out of Canada. It's the number 454 car of Jarrett Butcher. Outside row number four, from Lebanon, Tennessee, starting eighth, the 26 of Dawson Sutton. Starting seventh inside row number four from Claremont, Florida, the number 407 of Jason Vale. From Perry, Georgia, starting sixth, the number 17 of Hudson Bulger. Starting fifth inside, row number three from Ontario, Canada, the number 22 of Kyle Steckley. Starting fourth outside road number two from Lebanon, Tennessee, here is the 89 of Dylan Fancho. From Millersville, North Carolina, Starting third inside row number two, the number 25 of Gavin Bochel. And now your front row from Herman, Maine. Starting second, driver of the number 15, it's Mike Hopkins. And on the pole for the Allen Turner Snowflake 100, driving out of Pensacola, Florida, Farmer Snowflake 100 champion. It's the number 18, Hunter Robbins. Fans, it's now time for our pre-race festivities. Let's send it trackside to my tag team partner, Bill Roth. Thank you, Robbie. Good evening, everybody. On behalf of the Bryan family and all of I always say hardworking staff and management, but really, this week it's been hard working. Welcome to day number four, the revised, rescheduled, changed, and moved final day of the 56th Annual Snowball Derby. Still to come, and on the racetrack tonight, the Snowflake 100 for the Alan Turner Pro Lay models, and then we're going to wrap it up with the Faith Chapel Outlaws for 50 laps tonight. Remember that next year, we announced earlier this weekend, we have a big opening weekend next year. It's March 23rd and 24th. March 23rd is a Saturday. The ARC East will open their national series here on March 23rd, Saturday. And then on Sunday, March 24th, the ASA Super Series Super Late Models will be here. So that's our opening weekend, March 23rd and 24th. And for all you local fans, January the 13th, Saturday night, is our 2023 awards banquet at the Haji Shrine Temple. So those are the things that are happening early next year. We want to see you next year, just like we're so glad to see you here for 56th Annual Snowball Derby. We'll get these races underway in just a moment. As we always do, we're going to ask everybody to please rise and remove your hats, first of all, for our invocation and also for our national anthem. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Here is Mike Moulton from Carding for Christ and from the Marcus Point Baptist Church. Mike. Bill, thank you. I want to thank the Five Flags staff here as well for doing such an amazing job this past weekend. Can we give it up for the Five Flags staff here? Absolutely. And let's hear it for these drivers and their crews as well. They have put on one heck of a show, and they have endured just what is there to come for this time. So let's give it up one more time for them as well, too. All right. Listen, I know you're ready, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for this fine day you've given us, Father, for this amazing weather. And Father, we come before you just to say thank you for the freedoms and liberties that we have, Father, for a country that is free from the enemies of this world, Father, that you would continue to have the blessings over our men and women who serve this great country and to keep our nation free 
Father, to come and save the protection that we have to race on such a fine day in such a fine country. So, Father, we ask today that you protect them here and afar. And, Father, we ask that you protect these drivers and their crews tonight. And they put on one heck of a show for this crowd here tonight. We thank you, Lord. It's in your almighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Please remain standing with your hats removed for our nation's number one song from Pensacola. Here is Bailey Murray. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting Thank you, Bailey. Great job. One of the most important partners we have here at Five Flags Speedway, as I'm sure you all know, is Alan Turner and all the car dealerships that Alan Turner runs. This is Alan Turner, the sponsor of the Pro Late Model Division and every year of the Snowflake 100. First of all, Alan, thank you for your partnership year after year. Second of all, every time I get to talk to you at this time of the year, your company has grown, so I know it's grown in the last year. What's Alan Turner up to now? Just working all the time. Um, we Business is good. You know, a couple years ago, cars were hard to find, and, and discounts were rare. But I assure you, both of those are back in place. So we've got lots of cars, discounts every day. Uh, we think we'll open our Genesis store later on this week in Car City, so we're excited about that. But now what about these fans? Four days in a row, they keep coming back, and here they are again today for some Monday racing. It's going to be a good night. It's going to be a great night. And we, again, want to thank you for all of your sponsorship of the Pro Late Model Division. I'm going to let you say exactly what this is, but every year you give away from a random drawing a pre-programmed scanner to one of these lucky fans in here, right? That's true. Everybody that comes by our booth, they register, and we give away a scanner. It's programmed, and you don't have to be present to win, so we will... Uh, We'll get in touch with this person with their phone number. This is a great prize. Usually it's on Saturday, so you can use it on Sunday, but now this year you can use it next year. Yeah. Madison, Madison Larson. Madison Larson from a 407 area code. That's all I know. Madison Larson, you're the winner. We'll get a hold of you with that pre-programmed scanner from Alan Turner, the sponsor of the Pro Late Models. Once again, Alan, we appreciate your participation here and, and love this Snowflake 100 every year. Well, we're certainly glad to continue to be involved. This is a premier event, and uh, we just you know love the, the Bryant family, the staff here again. Phenomenal weekend to tackle all the adversity that they've had with the weather. But uh, it's a great night. It's time to go racing. Well, you're so wrong about this, but you think nobody wants to hear you talk. We've got somebody that you are going to designate to start the engines here. What's your name? Ken Dwayne. And what's your name? Addison. Do you know where you're from? Pensacola, Florida. Are you from Pensacola, too? You're, where are you from? California? Sandy. Do they race cars in California like this? 
They do, yeah, on I-5, right, Alan? Okay, now I know you practice this. This is really important. Are you ready? I'm going to put the mic down here, and you're going to scream it out, okay? The most famous words in motorsports, go. Drivers, start your engine. Perfect. It was perfect as we have fired the engines on a Monday afternoon, almost evening now, here in another hour and a half or so in Pensacola, Florida, for the running of the Allen Turner Snowflake 100 as part of the 56th running of the Snowball Derby Race Weekend, presented by Hooters, Safe Locator, and RaceChoice.com. Along with Jake Finch, I'm Adam Mackey in the booth. James Pike down on pit road during the course of this 100 lap race. And Jake, you had a chance to walk around down on the track just a few minutes ago as the cars came to grip. What did you feel down there? Did you talk to anybody? Did you hear from anybody? What do you think is going to happen tonight? Yeah, uh, luckily enough, I got to talk to a few different drivers. Uh, some of those guys being uh, Gavin Bouchelle of the uh, 25 starter inside uh, the second row, um, number th or third position. So I uh, talked to him and Jarrett Butcher and uh, Brent Cruz along with uh, Stephen Nasty. So um, definitely could feel the, uh, the anxiety between all those guys. Uh, some of the guys that's being their first one. Um, they're pretty nervous to see what they can do tonight. And uh, I talked to Nasty and kind of wanted to, I, I wanted to ask him and say, hey, man, you know, last night you, you barely missed, you know, winning that, winning that race last night. And uh, um, luckily enough, I got to race with him yesterday and, and kind of be up there with him. But he just said, you know, he's got a long way to go, but um, excited to see if he can get himself up there and, and hopefully come home with a snowflake trophy tonight. So, Racechoice.com pit reporter James Pike. James, what do you have for us? Looking at the top 10 starters in this race, before we take the green flag and the Allen Turner Snowflake 100, you have an interesting mix of experience and a little bit of new blood in there, too. We know what the pole sitter Hunter Robbins is capable of here. We know how good Dylan Fecho is in Nashville. Mike Hopkins has done stuff. But you have some new drivers, too. Both the Rackley War drivers, Kevin Michelle and Dawson Sutton, are making their debuts in this race, as are Jason Vale and Hudson Folger, who's been successful at Chris Motorsports Park in Georgia. However, the most experienced driver in this field, Augie Grill, I think put it best when I talked to him earlier. He said, this race can change and this track can change completely from one day to the next. And it may handle one way when it's nighttime and Saturday night, like we were supposed to be racing. It can handle completely differently in the daytime on Monday when we're racing now. And even now, as we transition into twilight, there are a lot of variables that are in place here and a lot of different things that these drivers are going to have to face over the course of the next 100 laps. So I guess ultimately, nobody really knows what to expect, just that there's a lot more balls for these drivers to juggle. And it could be the experience that wins out, or maybe the newest drivers in town could be the fastest 100 laps of action getting ready to go here at five flag speedway uh you know the track does change right now we're at 63 degrees they qualified it was 67 under some sunshine partly sunny skies at that point now we're going to go into cloud cover and we're going into nightfall yeah, um, like you said, it's going to be a little bit cooler, and we're, we're basically into the night here. Um, little to no sun as we go into this race. Uh, so I anticipate really high, uh, uh, fast and energy racing here tonight. Um, you know, the tires are going to be cold. Uh, that's what we're doing right now is trying to get heat to these tires to kind of uh, make sure we're ready to fire off. But I anticipate some uh, fast lap times to start off the beginning of this race. And uh, throughout the night, I expect it to uh, continue to be that way. So I think we're going in for a great race. I hope we don't have a whole lot of carnage. The last chance qualifier was really clean earlier, ran the final 45 laps without a yellow. Only caution in that race was for the engine issue for Nicholas Noggle. And the reason I think we're going to have a really good race is because I think there's going to be a lot of guys from the back of the field that move forward. Max Cookson starting inside of row 14 with Steven Nassie there in 14th row. Chase Berta, I think he learned something in that last chance. His car was really good. He's starting back in 31st. When I look a little bit forward, Luke Baldwin's got a fast car in row 13. Yep. Jeb Burton there with him. Caden Honeycutt, row 12. Brent Cruz is in row 9. Bryson Schaffer, row 8. Terry Seneca, row 7. I think you're going to have a lot of guys deep in the field. Matt Craig starting outside of row yep. 11. Those guys are going to come to the front. They have experience here, whether it comes in the Derby or whether it comes through the... Uh, the flake over the last few years and and, and we have michael hine coming in from that last chance yeah. race, who's, who really made his way through the field uh through that last chance qualifier but uh right here i'm, I'm anticipating some really uh i feel like it's going to be double file for for quite a few laps here 
um, to, until everybody kind of figures out where they want to be. And, and, and I talked to all you, um, I didn't mention him, but I talked to all you, I said, you know, you've led over 400 laps in the snowflake race, you know, what is what do you think when it comes to the, your, your tire saving, what are you going to do when it comes to, to managing your race car? You know, I think when it comes to what I learned yesterday in the snowball is just managing your race car and putting yourself in a good position is a, is a big factor, especially in this race with it being a hundred laps. And he said, you know, I just want to find a place where I can run hard, but not have to abuse my tires and not have to uh, make them upset. So I think uh, we're going to find all you try to find this way into a pack here and, and make some laps and then have some some tire left at the end. And I feel like we'll see a lot of those higher experienced guys do that. Wilson Motorsports team looking on from above the trailer. The the guy at the top there, Bon Suss, team manager with Wilson Motorsports. They've got a couple cars in this race, uh, also a couple of other cars. I think they're giving some assistance to the pace vehicle lights are turned off. That Allen Turner vehicle will head pit side this time, which means we're ready to go racing. Two by two by two. It is. <laughs> two by two by two. You'll probably hear it in the background as Hunter Robbins, the pole setter, Mike Hopkins in the 15, bring the field to green. The Allen Turner Snowflake 100 underway at Five Flags Speedway in Pensacola. Good jump there from the 18 from Hunter Robbins as the 25 falls in behind him. Hunter Robbins had a good run into turn one, but Mike Hopkins has a great run on the outside lane through turn two as they race to turn three. Robbins inches slightly forward, the inside lane moving up. Hunter Robbins, the pole sitter, can't close the door. Hopkins stays out there, but Robbins leads lap one. One thing you may notice a difference in, cars that run the outside lane, do you think it's easier to run the outside lane and pinch the guy down in the flake cars or the derby cars? Oh, that's a good that's a good question. I honestly don't know the answer to that. Um, I think it's a tough thing to do being on the outside here. Some tracks you can kind of manage it and get a good run, but this place is uh, very difficult as we see. Further back in the pack, you know, people are still trying to figure out how to way to get down. As Augie's going to try to follow in right here, get a quick clear, but he's not going to. As Couldn't 67 do 67 to Colin Allman's going to fill that hole. And, and that's his job there as Colin Allman. I mean, yesterday I, I did the same thing. You, you just got to fill as many holes as you can when it comes to lap cars, when it comes to people making mistakes. You have to you have to fill that hole and, and put yourself in a good position. Uh -oh, There's a out. record behind is Gavin Graham and uh, Grant Thompson get together here. And Chase Berta gets by. It looks like he's undamaged. Only three laps into this race. He had it locked down as we see the 70 of Graham, the 54 of Thompson. And uh, they were running right around 18th and 19th. A couple of young wow, teenage that's drivers. Right there. Gavin Graham's car looks like mostly cosmetic. Left rear looked like it sustained the most damage. Grant Thompson going to try to pull away from the scene. Has the left wheel turn yeah. to the left hopefully for him the right wheel is also turning to the left yeah we hope and so, it looks right? like that is the case so they were able to get it slowed down for the most part it's about the same point on the track that yesterday jeremy doss ended up in the wall yeah i remember that one he had that left rear tire go down out of the clear blue i don't know whether he had some contact that sent it down but then he couldn't save it he held on to it for a long time but when he got into the gas coming off of turn two it shot up the track and he locked her down Left front's down a little bit on the 54 car, so they're going to have to come in and try yeah, to get that, that raised up a bit. Looks like mostly yep. body damage on the Thompson machine. He should be they're able to They're definitely going to try to check some air pressures here to make sure they don't have a flat going. Try to try to pull the body panels off this yeah. car to make sure they don't have any tire rubber. I think the left better. front, the, the body work and the uh, exactly supports what just got pushed down a yeah, little bit on the front. Absolutely, on those okay. braces. But he, what, what he's trying to do here is just make sure we get that balance clear. Um, and we're going to see what happened right here uh, for the back of the pack looking on our replay here and you see it right side of the screen now oh, thompson yeah. was on the inside of graham and it looked like they were racing for the same spot of real estate on the bottom against the line and i think just like you mentioned um we're all fighting for the same real estate here you know you're trying to find a way to get down to the bottom as we take a look at this again and yeah they're, honestly it just it really looks in like they're kind of against the bottom but how far was he in when graham yeah. started to come down did graham yeah see if they were there, double that's the if, question if they were double file I, I do think that the 70 probably came down on it but he, i don't know it, it does look like a racing deal trying to just pinch him and get as much uh take as much off that exit of, of the 54 as he can and, and it just didn't work out for him so yellow flag out, three laps into the event. And Grant Thompson on pit road in the 54, as well as Gavin Graham. He just rolled by in the 70 car. Grant Thompson, the crew working on that car. Our racechoice.com pit reporter, James Pike, is in the stall, James. 
Yeah, Jake, you were right. There really wasn't that much damage to the left front of Grant Thompson's car. A little bit of splitter damage that they worked on, but most of the attention has focused on the right front that got pinned up on the wall outside of turn two. I've seen them going to work on the suspension over there on the right front, just making sure that everything's okay enough that there's not too much damage. A little bit of cosmetic damage on the body there, but for the most part, left front's good. Right front is where the attention is on Grant Thompson's machine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure there. Uh, I, being in Grant's position, he's definitely uh, trying to relay to the team to make sure the toe's not knocked out of it. I think that would be a big thing to try to figure out. Um, you know, driving that car back into the pits, they want to make sure that it's steering wheel straight and, and being able to, to have the, the same setup that they had before and not have to, to try to... So they're checking the, the A-frames and everything right here to try to make sure everything's still in line after the contact with the wall. And uh, so they're trying to get that together and hopefully they can, they can get out in time for to not go too many laps down here. So very little green flag racing at the start before the accident between Gavin Graham and Grant Thompson over in turn two. The pace car lights are off. We're going to be coming back around. Mike Hopkins in the outside lane hung on for a, a lap or so before falling back in line. And the caution lights are back on. So we will not come back to green this time. So they're giving another lap or so here to get things sorted out. Hunter Robbins leading the way, Mike Hopkins, Dylan Fetcho, Gavin Bushell, and Kyle Steckley, the top five. Yeah, they are. They are. So rolling double file right now. Watching is the pro late models of the Alan Turner Snowflake 100. Yeah, and I think one thing that I obviously know but didn't like realize, you know, is like in our race, 75 yellow comes out and, and cautions are counted. Um, and one thing that, you know, some of our viewers may not know that these caution laps that we're running right here are not counted. It, it is 100 green flag laps tonight. And that saves the guys like Gavin Graham and making pit stops, as well as Grant Thompson. They spent some time in the pits, able to make it back out. They will be able to stay on the lead lap. Gavin Graham is out on the racetrack following the field. Grant Thompson is not at this point. See if we get the one to go this time. Dan Spence, the chief starter yesterday and today, has been on the starter stand all week long, gives the one to go signal, so Hunter Robbins get a chance to bring him back to green. It wasn't an easy task to clear the 15, took him about a lap and a half. We'll see if Mike Hopkins tries to make it happen. And, and we saw Augie Grill back there. He's in 11th right now. He started 10th, so he only lost a spot, but we saw him trying to get down to the bottom lane. And how tough is that when the field is stacked up right after a restart yeah it's hard to just find a spot to kind of get in and, and ride obviously we saw the top four kind of figure out and, and get single filed here but we're going to see what what all you can do and the rest of these guys can do coming to the green here uh, with 97 laps to go green flag waving again good restart for the front row pretty even down the front straight away into turn one hunter robbins the half car length advantage and again mike hopkins gets a good run in the outside lane through one and two has the slight advantage as they head to turn three, Dylan Fetcho watches on. The Nashville Fairground Speedway champion there. Hunter got a little tight, middle of the corner, pushed up. And Mike Hopkins at the line leads lap number four. Yeah, definitely right here. Uh, Hunter's just trying to, he's kind of in a comfortable spot right here. Being on the bottom, you, you have a little bit of confidence that you're going to complete this pass right here. So I anticipate to see Mike Hopkins, yep, follow back in line here and try to at least either cross them over or, or save your tires and try to uh, get another shot at it. You know, there's 95 to go. There's nothing, no reason to kind of push yourself. And, and if these people have been tuned in um, since the LCQ, we talked about, you know, double file uh, racing is going to cause that person that's behind y'all to, to come catch up. So um, that was a good move by Mike Hoppins to kind of follow in line there and try there, to get another run. At and it. there we saw Steckley in the 22 Canadian driver picking up a spot on the inside lane. He's had a fast race car this week. Kyle Steckley moving up into the top five. Hudson Bulger back to six. Uh, it's getting tight back here. Renfrew in the double zero on the inside of Jarrett Butcher. Moves Butcher up the banking a little bit. Augie Grill will try to follow through and at the line. That time as they cross, Jarrett Butcher drops back a position. And Jason oh. Vale trying to stick his nose in there now. Yeah, and Augie's already in the inside of the 54 here. He's running ninth, so he found, found his way out to the bottom of the uh, the track and starting to make a pass on the 54 here. Um, as a 407, still looking in on the 17 of uh, Hunter, so we'll see if he can complete this pass right here. Um, and and he's, the 17 is really trying oh, to look get out. down here. Down oh. onto the bank, down onto the flat, Colin Allman and Jarrett Butcher. I think Allman got underneath him, Butcher, and he made contact. You see the tire marks down the side of the Butcher 54. 
There is Schaffer right behind him in the 33. This could be three or four wide entering turn. Number one, look out. It's going to be tight. Honeycutt on the top, Cruz in the middle, wall on the bottom. Here comes the one of Klein, the 43 of Loden. Three wide. Hot and heavy right there, still three wide. Klein makes the move in the one. Pretty good qualifying effort for Klein, and right now they are racing just inside the top 20. And Steven Nassi and Matthew Craig are still uh, 21st to 22nd back in the pack, so uh, they're, they're still trying to make their way through the field with Jeb Burton right behind them as well. And I think when you'll see them make their biggest moves is whenever the race goes along Green Flag Run, Absolutely. their cars are good, they've saved enough, and the other cars will start to fall off. Yeah, There's Nassi's already looking onto the inside of... Uh, yeah, that's uh, the 18 of Seneca. He was able to pick up the spot there. That's who I thought it was. I didn't want to mess that up. Yeah, there's a couple 18 cars out there. Uh, yeah. And Honeycutt gives up the spot to Klein. So Klein in the one has moved up another spot there into 16th. Caden Honeycutt back to 17th. Seneca's caught in that outside lane. He can't get back to the bottom. And Steven Nassie on the move. Again, to the inside of Loden here. Steven Nassie trying to pick off some spots. He was in 20th, this time at the line, in 19th. And Matt Craig will try to follow a couple super late model stars and headed toward the front. Yeah, just like I talked about, you know, filling that hole is a, is a huge deal. And Matt Craig's doing a great job of, uh, of following Nassie through the field. Um, and I, I expect these guys to be up front, you know, pretty fast. They're already starting to march through the field. Um, and so we'll see what these guys can do. And they're obviously putting on a show pretty good right here. There was the nine of Cataldi right in front of Loden. 39 of Cookson, 69 of Heim, nose to tail. Seneca's still caught in the outside lane, making his first flake start. And Boston Oliver's going to make a move to the inside. Jeb Burton has already done so. So Jeb Burton going to be up a position. That's a little further back in the field, 25th spot. Yeah, as Hunter Robbins still leads here, he's uh, his gap has gone up to three tenths here on uh, Mike Hopkins with Dylan Fetcho in third, Gavin Bochelle fourth, and Kyle Steckley fifth. Kyle Steckley's made his way up there. He's running good, good, uh, good laps right there. Hunter Robbins won this race way back in the uh, the, the mid two thousands. Like he was uh, a winner of the long? Snowflake. It's been a long time since Hunter Robbins has claimed the win here at Five Flag Speedway in the Flake. We He's been dominating pros this year. The sixty nine of Michael Hine make the move on the nine of Cataldi. Under green flag conditions, longest green flag run so far. We're at lap 17. We went to a restart with three laps in. There's Klein caught in the outside. After he picked up some spots in the inside lane, now he's giving some up. Nassi is there. Look out, it's going to get tight. Yeah. Nassi stuck his nose in there, and I thought Klein was going to come down and close the door. Yeah, he definitely wanted to. Uh, he's trying not to get stuck on the outside, like we said. And, and like I said, Mike, Matt Craig's doing a great job of filling this hole. And... and yeah, Klein's going to be able to shut the door here. Uh, so that, that's good for Klein to be able to get that run on the outside to be able to shut the door here. And Nassi is up to 19th, one yep. at a time, make it 18th at the line now. So he's starting wow. to pick up some spots. Nassi started this race in 28th. So he's picked up nine positions already. That car's coming to the front. And there's Klein, Craig, Loden, and Cookson running right behind Steven Nassi. So that's 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Michael Hind. After coming through the last chance race, picking up some spots as well. Michael Hind started inside of row 17 in 33rd, and Michael Hind is now up to 23rd. So he's picked up 10 spots, and he's got four more in front of him that he's a little bit quicker than. Michael Hind, Hernando, Florida driver, trying to make his move. We've completed 21 laps in this Alan Turner Snowflake 100. Jake Finch and Adam Mackey bringing you the action from Five Flag Speedway in Pensacola, Florida on Racing America. Our coverage brought to you by Hooters as well as Safe Locator and RaceChoice.com. It's our next to last race of the 56 Snowball Derby weekend and Matt Craig oh, uses give it the, the bumper. bumper to him. It's into the one of Klein a little bit. That opens the door for Cookson. Loden checked up over in turn two when it happened and Cookson's going to take advantage. Yeah, and Hyde's gonna try to fill the hole here. Uh, gonna get up on the straightaway because he doesn't want to pitch everything off, right? But he still wants to fill that hole. Um, and we'll be able to see if he can do that here. Side by side off of turn number two, the 69 of Hine makes the move. Upper left of the screen, Jorgensen in the 77. 47 of Bryson. Those are two drivers that made it through the last chance race, which means that Hunter Robbins is now catching traffic. And Jorgensen running 33rd, Bryson running 32nd. So now it's going to be lap traffic time. And this Hunter Robbins where, got to maneuver it and try to keep ahead of Mike Hopkins, who has a fast 15. Yeah, this is where Hopkins is going to be able to make a move. Um, if, if Hunter makes mistakes here and doesn't get through this uh, 
uh, lap traffic, which he seems to be carving through the traffic quite good. So uh, we can see if uh, Hopkins could do the same. Lower right of the screen. Matt Craig gets shuffled back a spot or two. Closes the door on Hine just in time to avoid losing two more spots. But Hine's going to try to get back to the inside of Matt Craig in turn one. He's going to be able to pick up the spot, I think, in another lap. Klein holding up the 39 of Cookson. What a season for Cookson. We talked about it. And right now, he makes a move on the one for position. Casey Klein had it. Max Cookson takes 19th away and Klein sideways off of turn four. Dirt tracking it down the front straightaway, and he's going to lose three more spots. So Klein's car seemed to be pretty good there for a bit, had picked up some spots, and now he's going to give up some positions right back. Past the one-quarter mark of this 100-lap race, and as we thought, we would see a lot of passing through the field because of some of the faster drivers that didn't qualify so well but are good racers, guys like Steven Nassie, guys like Michael Hind. There's Matt Craig picking up the spot on the one of Klein. 43 of Loden ready to make the move as well. Biding his time is the 18 of Berta. So Chase Berta, how about Chase Berta in the 18? He won the last chance race, started toward the back of the field in 31st, and he's up to 24th. He's making some moves, and he's faster than the two in front of him. Yes, he is. He looked quite solid in that last chance race, winning by over three or four seconds. Yeah, I think it ended on. up being 5.4 seconds. So yeah, he, that was uh, quite impressive. He picked up a lot of time down the stretch, which means he's got a good long run car. Yeah. There's Loden to the inside of Klein. Got a little tight going into turn one. Couldn't make the move quite yet, but he is inching forward on the inside lane. One driver struggling, uh, Terry Seneker, who started toward the front of the field. Decent qualifying run. Dylan Capello struggling as well. Grant Thompson, many laps off the pace after that crash early. Looks like he could be done from this event. Loden picks up the spot. Let's see where Loden moves up to here as he gets by Klein. That's going to be 22nd. Battle for 23rd now. Klein on the outside, and Chase Berta takes it. So Michigan's Chase Berta on the move, trying to move up, following him. The 15 of Luke Baldwin. He did not qualify well. Running in 25th right now is Luke Baldwin. Yeah, it looks like Terry Sinecker is uh, in the pits, jacked up. So don't know if uh, it was a mechanical failure or what ended up happening. They definitely the had some major issues yeah, there. Yeah, for they sure. Were off the pace. Uh, he started uh, 14th, so something definitely uh, must have happened on that car right there. There's the one of Ryan Fleming. He made his first snowflake race. He finished seventh in the last chance, but made it because of the disqualification in a post last chance race tech for a left side weight and fraction for Clayton Green. Here's Jason Vale to the inside of Jensen Jorgensen. Jorgensen a lap down to the leaders. Right now, the 407 of Vale in our rundown, currently seventh, having a nice solid snowflake race so far. Closing in on this halfway mark already. What a green flag run here. We've completed 35 laps, 15 from halfway. Yeah, this is fun. Uh, long green flag runs really dice things up and, and can show some good race cars and, and, and what drivers can really be disciplined. I think it was something that's not very talked about a lot at this racetrack is discipline. Discipline is a huge thing. Um, and I think yesterday, um, I learned it a lot yesterday. We had quite a few long green flag runs in yesterday's race. And, yeah, uh, like two of them went 75 laps. Another one went pretty long toward the end, too. Yeah, and I was lucky enough to be able to pick off quite a few of them there. And, and the thing is, is, you know, people will make errors and make mistakes, and, and this place is really line sensitive. So uh, to be able to see some people uh, make mistakes and stuff like that, long green flag runs just amplify mistakes. Um, as the tires start to get hotter and uh, the brakes start to get hotter, everything just starts to uh, get hotter, slicker, and uh, different stuff like that. So we will see um, who really has some discipline and who could uh, be on that line all night as Hunter Robbins still is leading by uh, six tenths, almost a second on uh, Mike Hopkins here. And he could be pacing himself a little bit too. Absolutely. He's been in enough of these 100 yeah. lap races and smart, knows not very, to burn off his tires. For for sure. We saw the nine of Cataldi. He's a car that's a lap down. So is the 77 of Jorgensen. So the lead lap cars in the top 10 able to get by. So is the one of Ryan Fleming. He's down a lap to the leaders as well. That's seventh place, the 407 of Vale. Eighth place, the double zero of Renfrew. And we knew Renfrew had a fast race car. He started this race in the 11th position. He's been able to move up to eighth. And Augie Grill running in ninth. So Grill, another one of those smart race car drivers, probably not trying to burn off his stuff this early but at the same time if this race stays green augie grill right now finds himself 6.5 seconds back of the leader at, at what point during this long green flag run do you say okay it's time to step it up just a little bit 
Yeah, watching uh, Augie's car right there, I mean, he looks pretty loose overall. Look, looks loose on entry and look, looks loose um, overall. So I, I don't know, you know, it's a double-edged sword. You don't know if you want to push it too hard and, and then ruin yourself for the longer in the race. And, and as these cars start to get lapped and we start to get really deep with lap traffic and, and stuff like that, I, I don't see it going 100 green. And if it no, does, I'd either. be quite surprised. But I think Augie's a really smart race car driver. And so are all these other guys in the top 10. So I think these guys are definitely going in through their mind and, and figuring out what they need to do. But you definitely need to pick off a few cars. And, and, and Hunter is setting a very good pace right here for these guys. I mean, he's running 18 ones right now, which is and, a very good pace. And he's been doing it while working traffic. He's been able to keep a five car length lead or so on Mike Hopkins. That is the top two. Mike Hopkins having a nice day so far. He's the last three years been one of the strong flake runners. Luke Baldwin moving over for the leader in the 15. He goes down a lap. There's Steckley. That is for position. Kyle Steckley got to the inside of Gavin Bushell and he picks up the fourth position. So move Steckley up to fourth. Next up, the team car to Gavin Bushell, the 26 of Dawson Sutton wanting to move into the top five. Jason Vale running there in the 407 in seventh. Jimmy Renfrew running eighth. Augie Grill still running ninth. He's not really made his way toward the front yet. And Hudson Bulger rounding out the top 10. Dustin Smith is going to lap down in the 33. That's him running there behind the 26. Dustin Smith was the last car to get in on time. And this is one of those long green flag runs. And you saw that three times yesterday. If your car's a little bit off, these long runs are not good. Yeah, like I said, it just amplifies everything. Um, on a short green flag run, you can kind of do different things with brake fans, or you can do different things with, with brake bias and, and, and try to get it to fire off differently and stuff like that. Um, especially having a good crew chief helps you do those things, right? But um, these, these long green flag runs, if you're loose, like, like Augie's quite loose here. So you're kind of holding on and trying different things with your line to try to see what you could do to make that car happy. Um, there's, there's so many different things that a car will like and, and stuff like that, but uh, long green flag rods just, just make everything worse sometimes. Coming to halfway this time, 50 laps in, 50 laps to go for the 18 of Hunter Robbins, and Mike Hopkins has closed the gap down to a car length. Hopkins closing now to less than a car length to the rear bumper of the pitboxes.com, number 18. Mike Hopkins, the best finish of third two years ago. He's qualified strong for this race the last couple years. He's been one driver on the radar, not from this area, and a driver that doesn't contend here very much, but somebody who we think get up there and challenge for a snowflake victory. Now he gives up a couple car lengths off of turn number two. 48 laps to go as the 18 of Hunter Robbins. He'll be closing on the 43 of Loden next. And that's Nick Loden, who's running 23rd. So 23 drivers on the lead lap, the last of which is Nick Loden in this long green flag run. Still green, 47 laps to go. We did get confirmation that there are no competition yellows in this race you can go as long as possible yesterday during the course of that race at 75 laps of green they would throw a yellow and we saw it twice but gavin graham in the 70 handful of steering wheels turning it to the right trying to keep it in the right direction he has gone down a lap to the leaders as there goes bichelle and sutton in fifth and sixth scooting by to the inside lane and Casey Klein down a lap now on the one. So we yeah. saw him running pretty strong up in the top 20 for a while, and there's nothing left in that car. He's just hanging on for dear life. Yeah, especially up there in the outside groove. It's just going to make how that car handles worse, right? So uh, we're, we're still working through lap traffic here um, as the 88 of Boston Oliver is going to lap down as well. Boston Oliver making his first snowflake race. Oh, Gavin Bosho gets turned around into the inside wall. Big hit inside wall for Gavin Bushell. Fifth place yeah, in the sucks. running order. And the first yellow since lap number three. I didn't see what happened there. I didn't either. I just happened to be looking down to see how what position Boston Oliver was in when the 25 car of Bushell went around. 45 laps yet to go. Quite a bit of smoke there coming from the right rear. Yeah. 
I hate that for Gavin. Gavin is a very nice kid. Uh, like, I've been able to hang out with him sometimes this week, and uh, him and his dad, Chris, are, are good people. So um, wait for the replay to kind of see what happened here. We'll see what happens with the uh, 25 when it pulls away. He scuffed up the right side of that ugly sweater. <laughs> but we'll see if he was running fifth right there when that happened, passing some lab cars. So um, if we can get the replay here. Again, the laps, laps under yellow don't count, so he's not going any laps down at this point. Just trying to find a spot to spin yeah. this thing around here. Cars all the way around the track. Yeah, the right rear looks like it could be shifted around a little bit. We'll see. Honestly, that car looks away. fine. So we'll see right here what happened in this replay. Ah, Boston Oliver got sideways and just came down a little bit more. Bochelle was expecting the 88 to go all the way to the top. And when Oliver got just slightly sideways, that brought him down about a quarter of a lane. And that was just enough. That reminds me a lot of I don't it, the Winchester 400 uh, last year when Jake Garcia and uh, Chandler Smith, when they kind of came off the wall. Yeah. And it, it looks a lot like that. You know, it's just that hit on the right rear. I'm pretty sure he's going to have damage underneath. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't know if that bent, bent a tube or, or what that could have done right there, but oh, that's just so unfortunate. Had a solid run going there for the for the 25 there of uh, Gavin Bushell. Here's another look at it. It was just a slight wiggle from the 88. 25 of Bushell was going up the track and just, un, you know, just a and wrong place at the right time. The 88 was been loose off the corner all night, uh, especially as a lap down, especially in the LCQ. And some things I found out. I think he's on the same tires from the LCQ. So there's a 50 lap tires. So that's 100 laps on those tires right there, uh, which would cause, you know, amplified yeah, loose absolutely. off right there. So they'll look and see if they can get this 25 of Bochelle back out on the racetrack. We've completed 55 laps. The leader, Hunter Robbins, Mike Hopkins running second, had started to close the gap and Wondering if he was going to mount a challenge soon for Hunter Robbins, Dylan Fetcho, Kyle Steckley, Gavin Bushell, rest of the top five. They're putting a tire on there. Yeah, and some things, you know, even if the car, we have Matt Craig in the pits here as well. Yeah, he was not going forward. He picked up a couple spots following Nassi and then had started to drop back. Let's see where he was running whenever he came pit side. Matt Craig was 20th position. Yeah, some things that, that suck on, on a deal like that, right, is you have a really good race car and you have a mis misfortunate event happen, right? And, and the big thing is, one thing that sucks is it being a 100-lap race, right? And my races are on Sunday races or, or longer races. You can kind of have some some luck and kind of get yourself back into the race throughout throughout the race, right? Some cars fall out and you can, you can have attrition, right? Um, and this stuff, you really have to get your mental game back into it and be like, all right, you know, that happened. Let's get our mind figured out on what we need to do for the rest of this race. So um, we'll have to see how the 25 car bounces back and how the 54 bounces back here. Rolling under yellow, getting the field realigned after some pit stops on this caution flag. We had gone 52 laps of green there. The field spread all the way around the track. We Number knew a caution was going to come at some point. Yeah, we were pretty sure it would. Yeah. yeah. Snowflake drivers doing a nice job today so far, but now this brings the field and the pack all tight. The tires aren't quite as good as what they were on the first restart. At we're, three laps we're in the in. night. We're in the night. And we are in the night. Pretty sunset here in Pensacola. It is. Beautiful look over turn three moments ago. Five Flags Speedway. We saw the Arca Menard Series logo on the wall over there. The Arca Menard Series East Season Opener, Pensacola 200, coming up on Saturday, March 23rd here at the track. ASA practice for the Stars Tour, as well as local classes to be announced. Then on Sunday afternoon, March 24th, super late model action returns. It will be race number two of the season for the ASA Stars National Tour, plus local classes to be announced as well. That's the 23rd and 24th of March. Make plans to come back to Five Flags Speedway that weekend. Think you'll be in action that weekend? Uh, yes, sir, both of them. Be good. I, I plan on it, you know, hope to hope to be in the uh, the ARCA race and the uh, um, super, late, super late model race for the ASA Stars National Tour on uh, Saturday. Yeah, Saturday, Saturday night's going to be the ARCA East race so and then Saturday, Sunday, Sunday afternoon okay, will cool. be the, uh, the super late models. So yeah. It seems to work well. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited for it. You know, we finished third and qualified second in the ARCA car last year. And the year before that, qualified third and we're running second for 170 laps and had a flight right rear. So that sucks. So hopefully I can 
capitalize and, and hopefully win that race. I uh, uh, love the ARCA cars. ARCA cars are a blast, especially at my home track here in Pensacola. So, and you picked uh, up an ARCA win this season? Yeah, Dover. So that was, that was pretty cool. A little for different, me. right? Yeah, yeah. It's about twice the size of this, right? So a lot being, of banking. A lot of banking. Being a mile and uh, being concrete was was definitely different for me. Uh, but to be able to win at that track, especially on my prom night, that was, that was the same night as prom, my senior prom. So then after that, I went, I went to the prom after party with all my friends, but I brought the trophy there. So I had a so good prom. Well, it was a daytime race, so you were able to fly yeah. back. And yeah, exactly. Nice. Yeah, so I brought Didn't miss too much. I brought Miles the Monster with me, and that was my date. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> 55 laps in, we're watching the coverage of the Allen Turner Snowflake 100. Jake Finch, young driver from the Pensacola area, getting a chance to make his broadcast debut here, filling in for Allen Dietz and doing a great job of it. Alan can take some more time off. <laughs> yeah, I'm enjoying this. This is uh, quite fun. I think I'm learning learning a lot for myself as well. Kind of be able to be more detailed in it and kind of talk about what I'm saying. Uh, you know, in elementary school or middle school, they always teach you when you write something down, it makes you remember it, right? That was like three weeks ago or something, middle school hey, element. You're being mean to me. <laughs> I don't know if I want to come back. No, but... <laughs> They, uh, this is awesome to be able to talk about kind of what I'm seeing, and I think it's helping me learn a few things too here. So uh, this is this is awesome. You know, I, I made a deal with Alan. I was like, hey, you know, I, I want to get in the, the, the booth. You know, Ryan Blaney and all those guys that I look up to, they do it all the time. You know, I was like, for the, for the ARCA or the Xfinity stuff, I was like, I need to get up there. And uh, he was like, man, if you win an ARCA race, we'll do it. He, I guess he didn't believe in me. I went over like two weeks after, so I called him. We did the bull ring. And uh, so now I'm here. And uh, but and we then are he one deserted lap to go. you. Yeah, he then deserted. he left me. He, like, he didn't ah. even do this with me. But this is uh, one lap to go. Or uh, we're coming to the green actually. Uh, Hunter Robbins and uh, Mike Hopkins uh, are going to be the front row here with uh, Dylan Fetcho and Kyle Steckley. Forty-five laps to go. Will we have another long green flag run, or will this one be rough on the restart? Two by two as they come to turn number four. Underway. Hopkins fighting to the outside. Inside lane moving forward. That's Hunter Robbins off of two. We'll have the lead. Yeah, another good restart by Hunter and uh, Mike Hopkins there. They both have pretty good jumps. Uh, there, there's not much uh, difference on the jumps right there. The outside lane obviously is quite difficult to to pin them down and really get a run here. But uh, we'll see how Mike, it really looks like they're in the kind of a class of their own right here, right? It got but, a little sketchy there for third. It was a little contact going into three. Fetcher was trying to get down. Steckley was looking underneath, made slight contact. Steckley's 22 might be a threat in this thing. He's been moving forward. Yeah, he's doing quite a good job. Uh, I haven't been able to watch him race a lot. You know, he's from up north, but uh, really looks like he's doing a good job tonight. And uh, passing the 89 to Dylan Fetcho, um, who's had a great year. Um, he runs really good at Nashville, winning the, the uh, championship there three times. So Fetcho knows what he's doing in these pro late models. And uh, so watching Steckley work on the inside of him and ends up clearing him here. Yeah, up to third. Kyle Steckley from Ontario, Canada has moved up to the third spot. Sutton to the inside, trying to move up to fourth and does. Dylan Fetcho wanting to get down to stay in the top five before Jason Bale gets there. I think he should be able to do it as we look back to our top two, first and second. Hunter Robbins, Mike Hopkins. They are the class of the field, pulling away from the rest of the field. How much percentage-wise are they giving their cars right now? 40 laps to go this time. Are either saving anything? Yeah, it's winding down for sure. These laps are going by fast for these guys, and, and they're definitely getting antsy. I know Mike Hopkins wants this lead really bad. He, he's within striking reach right here. So I know he's really looking forward to, to being able to absolutely commit to what he wants to do here. So um, I think give it, a, give it another 20, maybe 15 laps, and you'll really start to see him bust off some lap times. Yeah, and Hopkins right now is supplying enough pressure to Hunter Robbins to let him know, hey, I'm ready to challenge, and he gets close. Down in turn number two, 39 to go, 38 to go this time at the line. The Allen Turner Snowflake 100 on Racing America, presented by Hooters. And the top two in a battle. Hopkins is there heading to turn one. Is Hunter Robbins' car starting to give up a little bit more than Mike Hopkins' car? Hopkins runs that stock crate engine. So maybe not quite the horsepower, but I'd say it's close. And he's got the weight advantage too because of the weight break given for running the stock crate and honestly i feel like there should be a lot more stock crates running in crate racing and prolate action as the top two race off of turn number two 37 laps to go and i think something ended up do, uh being wrong with gavin Bochel's rear end here uh he's 31st and i think four laps down so yeah. i think he might have pulled that car in 
came out, gave it a try after changing the tire, but that was a hard hit to the back of the car for Gavin Bushell as we watch our top two, 35 to go this time at the line. Closing and almost to the one-third mark. There's Steven Nassi making a move. Nassi's picked up some spots. There's a move on Augie Grill. That's for eighth position. He started so deep in the field. Nassi might need some help with a yellow or two. Time just yeah. right to make this happen, but I think he's definitely one of the fastest cars on the track. Absolutely. Clean air is a big deal as well. Um, starting position and starting out front, being, a, I like to say, ahead of the eight ball is just a huge deal you know with me starting so far back i had to, i started 23rd yesterday in, in the race and, and making my way up to the seventh but the yellow is out here um, the slowed luke baldwin uh, in the luke 15. baldwin we saw him uh, going a lap down earlier in this race luke baldwin now spins down in turn three and luke baldwin was shown in scoring 22nd position yeah that's a tough break for the 15 of luke baldwin Oh, that could have been also part of the involvement. Casey Klein, another driver, one lap down. Heavy damage to the front end of his number one car. 35 laps to go. It'll be a little short track shootout to the finish on a Monday night in Pensacola, Florida, under the lights of the Allen Turner Snowflake 100. Damage very minimal on the 15, if at all, for Luke Baldwin as he makes his way to the pit stall. Taking a look to see how many cars on the lead lap at this juncture. Looks like we have 23 drivers on the lead lap. Pretty clean race to this point. As they will take a look at Baldwin's car. Don't see anything wrong with the right side. Look pretty good on the left side. Maybe going to check some air pressures. No, maybe not. Weeder, tire man there on the right side, looking it over, seeing if he should <laughs> check any pressures and doesn't look like anything's wrong, so they're going to send them back out on the racetrack. Yeah, I'd like to see what happened there. You can see the damage to the back end, so that would be where the one got into him. Most likely a checkup mm. deal, and he got into that's the back a good, pretty hard. That's good for arrow right there, let the air out underneath that thing. So maybe we can see him come through the field here. I don't know. I think he's already a lap down, though, so that's going to hurt his cost uh, a little bit. The one, or the 15 of all yeah, the down a lap earlier. Yeah, I think he did. And the 88 right there, of, uh, uh, he's pulling in. So there's the work going on, the 88 car of Boston Oliver, a driver that went a lap down earlier in this race. Boston Oliver, 16 years of age. You remember racing, you know, a couple years ago, two, three years ago, trying to gain experience, making some of your first snowflake snowball derby starts. And what's it like when you make a first start in a snowflake race? Yeah, yeah, I've only made one one start in the snowflake uh, with Anthony Campy in 2020. So. Uh, it was it was nerve wracking for me, obviously, and, and not having Campy there. Uh, he had surgery on his. Um, I don't remember what it was, but he had surgery, and, and so it was me and Jimmy, um, who's the crew chief on the 51 tonight for Stephen Nassie. And so me and him worked together really hard on that car and had some pro troubles in practice, but ended up qualifying like 26th, but ended up finishing second that night on Saturday night. So um, it, it's very anxious. You know, you're 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 nervous on what to do. You know, you're so young, you have so little of experience and you don't know really what to anticipate or what to do. And, and, and I think it's just a big learning curve, right? Especially racing some of, the, some of those guys that I was racing against is Bubba Pollard was in that race, Steven Nassie, Derek Thorne were kind of the guys up front. And so um, now obviously I'm still racing with those guys, but uh, you know, just racing with those people teaches you so much and, and respecting those guys and them kind of giving you respect back has made me such a bit more better race car driver. Boston Oliver back out of his pit stall and there are a lot of young drivers in the snowflake race every year. You normally have your 10, 15 guys that you see that are always a threat like Matt Craig and Steven Nassi and Dylan Fecho and Hunter Robbins and Augie Grill, but then you've always got the new kids coming yeah, into town. For sure. The 16-year-olds, the 17-year-olds <laughs> that haven't had a chance to race here before. Yeah, I was 15 when I made my snowflake debut. Um, and 15 when I made my first super late model debut. So so pretty young uh, getting the starts here. But we're about to go green here. And, and to mention, to add on to that, Nassie, this is the caution you were talking about that he needed. 
Uh, he's made his way from 28th to where he is now, so we'll see what he can do here. He's on the outside lane, though. Will that be a disadvantage? Will they line up to the inside of him and pick up some spots? Grill trying to get back by in the 43. Back underway, 35 laps to go. Steckley up the track, all oh. up the track. Jim Wall off the pace, through the middle goes Matt Craig. Pretty hairy moments there in turn number two. Back up front, Steckley in the third spot. Sliding it all the way out to the wall in third. Fetcho running fourth, Sutton in fifth. Renfrew continues to move up in the double zero. He has a fast race car. Yeah, yeah. Nasty finally got down there, being all stuck on the outside. So we'll be able to see if he could fill this hole uh, with Augie racing the 407 pretty hard right here. Ninth place right now for Steven Nassi. That's seventh and eighth right in front of him. Augie kind of takes a high entry in. That will deposit the 407 of Vale back into eighth. Not for long, though. Here comes Nassi to the inside. Eighth position up for grabs. That's where he restarted. He lost his spot. Being in that outside lane for the lead. Oh, Mike wow. Hopkins to the inside of Hunter Robbins. Looking for his first snowflake win. Drives into turn one. Pushes up the track. Robbins trying to pull the crossover. Gets back to the inside. Move. Robbins with the crossover when Hopkins overshot turn one just a little bit. And for the lead, the battle continues down the front stretch at the line. Up against the wall. Hopkins by inches at the stripe, but Robbins takes it away. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good move from Hopkins to try to get down there and get another run out of it instead of getting stuck on the outside there. Steckley was starting to fill that gap in there. As we've said multiple times in this uh, in this race, you know, race a double file is going to promote that guy from behind you to kind of come in and try to take that hole. So uh, let's see if my confidence can cool his tires down and make another run at Hunter Robbins. First and second with the advantage over Steckley in third. Looking lower right of the screen, we see Brent Cruz in the 24 picking up the spot from Loden. Loden back to 14th. Cruz up to 13th. He hasn't come through the field quite as quickly as he would have liked. Further forward, upper left. We see the battle for the lead, the top three. Now the top two. Lower right, it's Steven Nassi and Augie Grill. Steven Nassi has taken seventh from Augie Grill. Now if he gets a yellow, he'll be lined up on the inside lane. Should be a lot better than the last time when he was caught outside of row number four. Yeah, and he's, uh, he's a little bit faster than Renfro right there, running a 18-1-2 uh, and Ren Renfro running a 1-9-6. So let's see if he could chase down the double zero of Hunter. Watch the times now that Nassi has some clean track in front of him compared to Hunter Robbins. Robbins crosses the line, this time a 17-9-0-5. Nassi crosses the line an 18-1. So Nassi not quite as quick as the lead duo. That top two, they really have their stuff together this yeah, week. Absolutely, and like I said, uh, get getting around lap 25 to go or 25 to go is really when you'll start to see those lap times pick up this is the first time we've seen them in the 17th or the 17 second barrier since the beginning of the race on those fresh tires so um they're definitely starting to pick it up pick up the pace and try to uh get it together here so uh we're, we're definitely going to see some racing get get uh, interesting right here 25 laps to go dylan fetchel hanging on to his car right now steven nassi still on his way forward right behind fetchel who runs in fifth is Renfrew and Nassi, cars that are coming forward. Now, Fetcho's dropping back a little bit. Nassi ready to pounce. Yeah, Nassi's probably going to uh, back his corner up right here, try to get a run at the double zero, and then uh, capitalize through one and two. So we're going to see if he can do that right here. He's half a car back, and he's going to, I think he's going to get in, in the inside of the double zero right here. And Renfrew, he wants to make a challenge at the 89, yeah. but he knows he's got to be a little bit careful too because Nassi, if he messes up just slightly, is going to be there to pounce. So defensive racing as well as offensive racing, trying to find that yeah. happy medium for Passive Renfrew. aggressive for sure. 23 laps to go. Good racing in our Alan Turner Snowflake 100. The racing yesterday for the Snowball Derby was exciting as well and couldn't have been more exciting than the eight laps that Steven Nassi and Ty Majeski had side by side. Yeah, this was a great race. I, I don't want it to end yet. I know, and Steven Nassi's going to try to look to the inside of the double zero, but he's not there yet. It's going quickly, this race. A lot Here of green is. flag action. Comes. Nassi to the inside of Renfrew. Four position. That is sixth place up for grabs. Not anymore. Nassi has taken the it. Double Renfrew. zero is going to try to get down quick. Nassi kept that bottom lane closed. Coming off of turn four. Wasn't going to be able to make the move. The 89 of Dylan Fecho. Now will try to get away from Steven Nassi, but it's not going to happen. Nassi's car coming to him. 20 laps to go. This is Steven Nassi territory. And yes, typical races, especially here at Five Flags, coming from the back. Yesterday, he qualified well for the Derby. Didn't have to come from the back. He ran yeah. up front all day. Yeah, and uh, that Anthony Campy crew gave him a good car yesterday, uh, it seems like, as he's he's just Jeez. marching right here. Uh, as he looks at the inside of the 89 right here, that was a, a good exit off of two right there. And I wouldn't want to be in the mirror of him right now. 
fifth place now to Steven Nassi. He's moved from deep, deep in the pack after a qualifying run that put him deep in the pack on the outside of row number 14 and 28th. He's the hard charger moving from 28th up to fifth, but there's a big gap now up to the next position in fourth. This would be an opportune time for Steven Nassi to see a caution on the racetrack. And one thing I would like to talk about is, you know, during our race yesterday, like we said, we had those long green flag runs, and Nassi was part of that race. He was in that race for 290 laps, right? So maybe some of these things that he learned yesterday on that long green flag run that helped his car or helped his driving style during that race yesterday, he's bringing into characteristics now. You know, our race did end towards the night, so uh, the track conditions were pretty similar. So maybe him putting himself in different positions on the racetrack to be able to do the things he's doing right now. Watch the different lanes they're running. Hopkins brings it out wider, takes it in wider, takes it all the way up to the wall. His entry's a little bit later going into the corners. Lower right of the screen. Renfrew on the inside of Dylan Fecho. That is for sixth position. Lead battle upper left. Battle for six. Lower right. Renfrew going to pick up the spot from Fecho, who started the fade about the race's mid-mark with 15 laps to go. 85 now complete. Yeah, it's Steven Nassi's almost a tenth and a half faster than the 26 car Dawson Sutton. So uh, maybe he will be able to march him down as well. I mean, Nassi's, Nassi's running really good laps right here. P3 lap times um, as he's a tenth faster than Cal Steckley as well. But like we said, he started from further back in the field. So he might need a caution to even get back up there. His 15's running some good laps right now. He's yes, about he to pounce on the 18 of Hunter Robbins. 14 laps to go, 13 this time. And just a little bit of a different line. He's kind of searching around where he's going to be able to make that run. Robbins gave up the inside lane one time, and Hopkins went past him, but he overshot turn one, and now yellow's out. Oh, I was about to say. I don't <laughs> think Hopkins wanted to see that yellow. I think this is a benefit to Hunter Robbins, to be quite honest. I, I would agree with you on that. Um, it's not a benefit for the top four because in fifth place inside of row three is going to be Steven Nassi. Exactly, and, and I think those guys up front, uh, the 18 and the 15, are... are definitely seeing that the 51 is coming for sure um and one thing you know watching that right there uh, of the 15 kind of being so close to uh, hunter robbins for so long right there you know his goal right there is to force him to make a mistake you know the the biggest thing i found yesterday or racing in general is when you're so close to somebody like that and you're racing them that hard you just want to drive it in harder drive it in harder and just make them make a mistake and you just capitalize on that mistake once they do make the one 18, Hunter Robbins, the race leader. Mike Hopkins was challenging heavily. Was right there on the rear bumper. Car rotating so well in the corners was taking a little bit of a higher arch in and letting it go out to the wall. Mike Hopkins out of Herman, Maine, looking for his first snowflake victory. The 18 of Hunter Robbins looking for his second snowflake victory. Hunter Robbins having a solid run here today. 2005, he claimed his only snowflake victory. You don't remember that one, do you? <laughs> well, due to the fact that I was born in 2005. You could have, kind of. You know, you might have been there. No. No, because it's the wrong time of the year? Yeah, I was born in June. So I'd be six months old. I, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, you I probably was. weren't here. Hey, I always tell, you know, my, my godfather and my, and my driver coach and, and just my dad's best friend, Eddie Mercer, he won the snowball in 2005. And it took him a while to do it, you know, sitting on four poles, I think, three or four poles, right. and, and leading so many laps and, and just coming up short so many times. He finally got it done in 2005, and I always messed with him. I said, you won it the year I was born. It had to have been me. And he laughs, but I, I think that's the truth. And Hunter Robbins did too. Yeah, I think it just might be me. So Hunter Robbins. Strong race car, but one car, at least one car, might be a little bit better. It's that 15 of Hopkins. And not long after the last restart, he made the pass, went into turn one, and just overshot the turn enough to allow Hunter Robbins the crossover. And he timed it up perfectly, took the lead back. There's the 24 of Brent Cruz. Part of the reason for the caution, damage to the right front of the car. They're going to check the toe to see if they can send him back out and keep him in the right direction, at least to make it to the finish. Brent Cruz in the 24 car. Listed down the list a little bit, was running just inside the top 15. Fourteen laps to go, 86 completed. Hunter Robbins. 
Mike Hopkins, Kyle Steckley. Watch the inside lane. If it moves the way that it could pan out, Nassie could pick up the four spot. And when it, now, Hopkins has done a great, because his car is so good, he's been able to get down. But Steckley being in third might be good enough to, to close that gap on the inside lane. Yeah, but the past restart, Steckley's kind of had a, a had a little bit of a problem firing it off and getting a good jump. You know, not to say that that he won't fix that. You know, um, as race car drivers, you, you try to figure out what you did and and make sure that you don't do it again and make sure to find out. And you talk to your team, your crew chief, and the guys that are helping you to make sure you can do better on what you did before. But I will say, yesterday, we had some cautions in yesterday's race, and, and it went well. You know, we would have the cautions, and we would have the long green flag runs and stuff. But then we got to lap. We got to around this time of 15 to go, and the big one happened. So I don't know if they're done wrecking yet. Yeah, I hope they are. It's been a pretty clean race so far, as here comes Robbins, here comes Hopkins. First and second. Watch Nassie inside of row three. 15, make it 14 laps to go. 86 completed, back underway at Five Flag Speedway. Hopkins does get down. He's right there on the rear bumper. Sutton dropping back, 51 of Nassie. Inching forward into the four spot. Dylan Fetcho on the inside lane. Nose to tail. To the inside of Fetcho back there is Renfrew again. Oh, Fetcho starts to close the door. I, he allows the double zero still to get in there. I thought it was gonna get pretty tight on the bottom lane. Yeah, it does. It does get tight on there. So we've singled out toward the front. Steven Nassi finds himself in fourth now. Does he have anything for Steckley? Hunter Robbins has gapped the 15 car of Hopkins by a car length. 12 laps to go, 88 laps in. Yeah, definitely. Augie grills off the pace. Definitely to have contention for this race. Nassi's looking for, for another caution, for sure. Um, not that he doesn't have the, the car fast enough to do it. It's just track position and, and, and getting up there to do it with him, especially when Hunter and, and Mike Hopkins are running such good lap times. I think Nassie would like to get by the 22 of Steckley first. That would put him on the Absolutely. inside of the second row. Then he wouldn't mind seeing a yellow flag as the top two start to stretch it out. Hunter Robbins, Mike Hopkins, their lead up to over the third place car of Steckley, just over one second. That is the battle for third right there. Steckley pushes up. Here comes Nassie to the inside as the yellow comes the out and the out. field slows. Yeah, Nassie definitely wasn't looking forward to that yellow right there. I wish he, He's probably wishing it came probably half a lap later. He was just about to make that. And he cautions out for some debris on the racetrack, as it looks like. Couldn't tell if that was some tape or if it's a piece of metal, but they're yeah, going I couldn't to tell either. pick it up. And we're probably never going to... Uh, no, it is definitely uh, <laughs> uh, not a piece of tape. <laughs> 11 laps to go. 89 laps completed. And here we go again for another restart. 18 of Hunter Robbins, 15 of Mike Hopkins. Hopkins still strong dropped in lines. He's done a great job on the restarts. He doesn't have enough to challenge Robbins in the outside lane, but he has enough to stay ahead of the third place car and get in line. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think that Hunter and, and Mike Hopkins were running really good lap times right there. They started getting into the 1770s and 1780s. I mean, they're pushing as hard as they can to try to get the Snowflake Trophy back at their race shop. We did receive word that the piece of debris down there was a floor mat. I guess if you don't want to get sand on your, your a uh, floor interior, mat. a floor mat. Was it a floor mat or like panning for under the race car? I said it was a floor mat. You've been driving around out here? Uh, no, I, I haven't actually. It Somebody had mine. a floor mat in their car. They don't now. <laughs> <laughs> what if it was the pace cars? That would be a big <laughs> deal, huh? Fell out of one of these rides or it was laying on top of a deck lid or something and it slid out. But the 18 of Hunter Robbins will have to hold off a strong field of challengers on yet another restart. It's between he and 15 of Hopkins who have the best cars, I think. Nassie's is right there close to it. Not I, sure I, that he has the speed of the top two, but we're going to find out possibly. That track position is, is hard to, uh, it took him a while to get up there. So we don't know how much tire he has left of after working through the field for that long. And uh, he's also going to be starting on the outside uh, of Steckley. So uh, Steckley has a fast race car. So I think it was taking him a few laps to get past Steckley there as well. So this is shaping up to be an even better race than it has been. It's really been, for true race fans, this has been a great race. You know, it has the cautions. It has the restarts. It has the, the two good front runners. I mean, this is an amazing race so far. And it's a good one. I agree. We've seen a lot of guys coming from the back toward the front. Nassie from 28th to third. That's a run through the field. We've seen some guys drop back that were toward the front of the field. 
that did not handle well on the longer runs today. We had a green flag run of about 52 laps earlier, middle portion or early portion of this race. When the field doubles up, it's going to see Hunter Robbins inside, Hopkins outside, Steckley inside. Now, you mentioned it on the last restart. Some of his restarts haven't been the greatest. Is Nassi good enough to beat him off of turn two to get down in front of him for third? I would like to say, I would like to think so. Um, you know, unless it's Steckley, not easy. It is not. It's not easy at all. But having a good jump is a big deal, and and we'll see if Steckley can do that. Um, he's kind of struggled a little bit on the restarts here. Um, and, and we'll see if he can get a better jump here and, and, and dice things up with the 18 and the 15 here. But um, if the 51 can get a good jump and get, and get clear them and, and do it fast, if he does it fast, then he might have an opportunity to kind of take advantage of the 18 or 15's mistakes or, or fill a hole. Um, but he has to do his job fast. The 39 of Max Cookson inside of row three, all of a sudden he finds He's made himself his way up in there. seventh. He's kind of been on our radar of a guy that we thought would come through yep, the field. He was on our list for sure. 39 of Cookson started inside of row 14. It's that 14th row of Cookson and Nassi that have been the big movers coming through the field. And tonight. Michael Hind has made his way up to 14th. I know that's not uh, inside the top 10, but he did start from the last chance race. So a uh, good run for him as well. Here we go, 11 laps from the finish. Have we seen our last restart? Will this be it? Mm, maybe. I don't think so. 50-50 chance, I think, at this point. 50-50? Yeah. 18. Of Robbins, 15 of Hopkins, Steckley restarting third, Nassie restarting fourth, trying to get a run, laying back just a little bit in the fourth spot, and then Sutton restarting fifth, back underway, Green is out. Better jump for Steckley there. Good restart for everyone, but Fetcho, he loses some ground in the outside lane. Steckley does do a pretty good job on the inside. Now it's about Nassie. He wants to get down before Sutton can get inside. Oh, oh. A big one over in turn two. I told you. Uh, they weren't done yet. There was the 69 of Hine, 27 of Burton, 43 of Loden, 18 of Burton, 91 of Wall. All stopped in turn number two. Caution flag is out, and there's the big one for tonight's uh, Allen Turner Snowflake 100. Not nearly as big as the one on the front stretch yesterday. Can we not but, talk about it? Well, I tried not to it bring just it hurts up my heart. as long as it Yeah, even this possible. happening right here just brings Most back. of these guys able to pull away, which is a good thing. Yeah, I was not able to. No. Yeah, no. There I were was... a lot of guys in that wreck not able to. That, that reminded me yesterday of a Daytona or Talladega style wreck. Just I'm also, piling in. now that this is announced that I'm racing Daytona, I'm not looking forward to that either. Hope, so hopefully, He's got to avoid that. Hopefully, I got that over with last night. It's an ARCA race, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so it's a little different in ARCA. It, they usually spread out. It is in like three and, different. And, and we're in a good race car, so hopefully we'll have a shot there. But yeah, this is not this is not a good deal right here. Uh, they all just I, we haven't really seen a replay of what happened there. But uh, yeah, it doesn't definitely doesn't make me feel good uh, knowing seeing that happen uh, and, and knowing what happened yesterday. This is Jarrett Butcher. Mm -hmm right here and also involved in that wreck being, being able to drive his car back to the pits and see if they can they can fix it here they're definitely looking at the duct work to here's see the replay take a look at what happened we see the 89 of fetcho not getting a great start it kind of stacks them up in four but they cleared out they go down into turn one Loden's up the track a little bit Schaffer looking to the inside Loden comes down a little bit Schaffer oh. had his nose in there trying to peek in through the middle just and nowhere to go nowhere to go for anyone else that's a tough one So they pile them 54 in. 54 did a good job of getting around that. Yeah, Matt Craig. So did the 17. Matt Craig yesterday got a top five in the I race know. because he snuck through. I know. <laughs> but he was able to get slowed down in time. You were just a row too close to it, I think. Yeah. Watching again down in turn one and two, loading up top. He just took that high arch in and it opened that inside middle lane for Shafford. I'm sure looking back at it, Shafford like, ah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. But it's this point of the race with 11 to go. He gave you the middle and you thought you could get in there. Yeah, Brent Cruz, along with those guys that kind of made it through that that wreck right there. 17 did a really Holger, good job yeah. of getting, there, getting through there. Yeah, I mean, yesterday I did everything for the pace car. You know? in, in just one wreck? Yes. Yeah. Throughout the race, just, I did yeah. I did fine. You were pretty clean other than the other parts. Yeah. yeah. Your percentages were good until that, that one lap. Oh, that, that right rear has been pretty good right there. Yeah, 69 of Michael Hind in the pits. You just gave him the jinx a little bit ago saying he had come from the I last know. chance race and moved now up into 14th. Bad. There's the Michael Hine team working on the right rear of the 69. Still 11 laps to go in the Alan Turner Snowflake 100. Right rear. Trying to see if they can get this car back out, but it doesn't look like it will happen as Michael Hine climbs from out 
of the 69. Tough two days for Michael Hine, but they knew he was here. That's for sure. Michael Hine yesterday, especially in the Derby, impressed a lot of people with not only his qualifying effort, but his run in the top five for a good part of that race yesterday. Young driver from Hernando, Florida. Had to come from deep in the pack and was picking up spots, was up to 14th when the accident took place ahead of him down in turn one and nowhere to go as he explains it to his crew down in the pit stall. So clean up, finishing up down in turn two. They stopped the cars momentarily, probably to avoid yeah. you know, running off more fuel at this stage of the race. We've had some cautions here, second half. Uh, second half yeah, of this Yeah, you keep event. having more cautions, that definitely comes into thought. Um, you know, you can make about 150 uh, green around this place on fuel. Um, that's just an estimate, you know, I'm not a crew chief, so I kind of just do my job and get told when to pit, right? But uh, I think 150 is usually the uh, goal. And obviously under caution, as it starts getting deeper and deeper and deeper, you know, some of the drivers up front and stuff like that, they'll, they'll, they'll start to save a little bit of fuel if they can. Uh, but I don't think fuel will be a problem. Yeah, nobody's going to be saving over the last 11 laps, especially up front with Hunter Robbins, Mike Hopkins, Kyle Steckley, and Steven Nassie. The top four look like the ones to battle it out to the checkered flag here, especially Robbins and Hopkins. They have been fast as we will send it down to our racechoice.com pit reporter, James Pike. James? Hein, what did you see from your perspective behind the wheel as everything broke out there? Yeah, you know, they're, we're racing real hard. It's late for the race. Um, I seen them wrecking up front, and I seen one car get sideways. I just I went and dove low. As I was going low, I just got hit in the rear and knocked the wheel out of my hand. Wasn't really much I could do. It's a break for Michael Hind. Also trying to get a word from Jarrett Butcher, but I ran into his brother Cole and talked to him, and Cole said that he hopped out immediately the car and has already hit the showers of the trailers. So I uh, was none too happy about the way that panned out. But Jarrett Butcher out of the race, Michael Hind out of the race as well. Good stuff from James Pike doing a nice job down there here this afternoon. There's the Jeb Burton 27 working on that car. The right front was definitely... Had a little bit too much uh, too much camber in it. I think it took a pretty hard hit on the right front as they <laughs> tear some panels away, and it was spewing some water out of the overflow, too. Drew still seems like they're going to do a little bit of work on this 27. Yeah, it looks like the whole duct work is knocked out of it as well. Obviously, we can't tell much from this camera angle, but uh, definitely a tough break for Jeb Burton and that 27 team. You're watching the Alan Turner Snowflake 100 on Racing America, presented by Safe Locator, RaceChoice.com, and Hooters, bringing our coverage all week long. The Faith Chapel Outlaw 50-lap feature event. Their field has been set. Derek Griffin from Pensacola, formerly from Indiana, he is the fast qualifier and will be starting from the pole position in that one. Robbie Harvey and Bill Roth will call the action. There's the leader, Hunter Robbins, looking for his first snowflake win since 2005. 15, Mike Hopkins looking for his first ever snowflake win, has made the last couple starts and had a good third place run two years ago. Kyle Steckley in the 22 ride. Looking for an impressive run here in the flake, has done well so far. Nick Loden, heavy damage in the 43 car, and James Pike has some information on that. Yeah, I just talked to Nick Loden. He said, uh, I truly have no idea what happened. I was so far back, and I, I don't want to say anything in particular before I see the replay because I just, I don't know. So that's, that's how chaotic it was back there, Adam, that some of these drivers just had absolutely no visibility, no clue what broke out until they were well deep in it like Nick Loden was. It does happen quickly, and that it did for Loden, who had just taken that little bit of a high arch and left that middle groove empty for a moment. They gave Bryson Chaffers. We take yet another look at the Racing America replay. Down into the corner, loading up the track, left it open, bobbled a little bit. Schaffer kind of peeks in there, just yeah. not enough room. Yeah, there's not much to do right there, especially for these guys in the back. 69 just gets taken out to... There's just nowhere to go. I've been in that situation, and it, it's just a tough deal, right? We're ready for a restart. 11 laps to go, 89 laps completed to pit road 
Comes the Allen Turner Pace vehicle, and Green is out. Good restart for Hopkins. They were dead even at the line in the starting box. Into turn one. Nassie getting a slight advantage on Steckley for third. Who's going to have that spot? Two, three oh, good battles up front. Hunter Robbins into turn number three. The advantage into turn four. Coming to the line. Ten laps to go. 90 down. Robbins the advantage. Hopkins closes to the rear bumper. Does he make a move right now? Is he afraid that the 18 will pull away? He almost had the runoff of two that time. Yeah, he's definitely thinking about it. And I think as these uh, laps start to wind down, I don't think we're going to be scared to use the bumper at all here. Uh, this is a big race. Crown jewel for these guys. So uh, definitely uh, wouldn't put that out of the way. I think that might have been his shot, though. He bobbles a little bit coming off of two. Nassi yet to challenge the 22 of Steckley. Eight laps to go this time at the stripe. The 18 of Hunter Robbins. Leading the way, the 15 of Mike Hopkins drops back two to three car lengths. Can he set up a challenge, get into a groove with eight laps to go? Nasty's going to look to the inside of the 22 of Steckley here for third place here. From 28, the battle for third now. Steven Nassi, after a near snowball derby win yesterday before Ooh. he and Pollard had the contact, and he takes the spot. Got a little tight coming off of four. <laughs> yeah, it did. Steven Nassi up to third. He's going to need some help to get up there. I don't know that he can catch the top two. With this amount of time, six laps to go. He, they start to battle it hard. He can get up there. He's praying for a caution right here. Nassi's, Nassi has a really good race car. Uh, like Adam said, made his way from 28th. So uh, he's shown speed all night long, and, and it's just hard to get up to him while they're they're racing. And single file, especially. If they're double file, we kind of promote that that uh, to fill the hole there. But uh, he's praying for a caution here. Mike Hopkins is closing the gap. This one is not over yet. Five laps to go, and Hopkins has a car that is coming back to him. It's the 18 of Robbins. It's getting bigger and bigger in his front windshield as we have four laps to go. Who's going to do it? Hunter Robbins, Mike Hopkins, or is Steven Nassi in the right spot? Hopkins used it all up on the front stretch, nearly took down the wall. First and second. Off of turn number two. Going to be three laps to go this time. Hopkins. Takes that high arch in, lets the car roll through the middle, closes the gap, gets a good run off of four. Close that gap big time in three and four that time. Yeah, it really looks like the 15 Hopkins is, is struggling for a little bit of drive off of uh, uh, off of two right here. I, it might be a little tight center. Um, and, and really can't create that turn past center to, to create that drive off here. But he looks pretty solid off of four. And, and you really, if you've watched the race all night, a lot of the passes are made off of turn two. Uh, and I, I just don't see him being able to, to get it to turn and, and have that drive off he needs to complete the pass. But we're coming to one to go here at the line as Hunter Robbins is leading Mike Hopkins with two to go here at the Snowflake 100. Final lap, white flag is out. One to go for Hunter Robbins. One of the favorites year in and year out. Yesterday made his 13th start in the Snowball Derby. Hopkins giving it his all. Car wiggles on the exit of two. He's not going to get there. Coming to the checkered flag and the Allen Turner Snowflake 100. First win in this race since 2005, Hunter Robbins. Mike Hopkins second, Stephen Nassi third, Dawson Sutton, Kyle Steckley, the top five. Renfrew takes home a strong six, Jason Bale seventh, Max Cookson eighth, Dylan Fetcho and Caden Honeycutt rounding out the top 10. Whew. Hunter Robbins. Pretty good stuff today. He ran a really Mike good Hopkins, race. Man. Mike Hopkins a, made it a good race. What a try. Nobody else had anything for the 18. He no. did, just that right at the end, just was off a little bit. That's a good rebound for the 18 and, and of Hunter Robbins and Ronnie Sanders racing right there. Uh, after last night's incident, they were caught up with, with me and everybody else that was gathered on the front stretch last night. So I, I guarantee you he's super exhilarated about that win right there. And Obviously, Hunter Renfro, his car is blowing steam out of that thing. So he gave it absolutely everything he can. I Hopkins? mean, Hopkins. I mean, I'm sorry. Sorry about that, guys. I'm just a rookie. That's okay. Just wanted to make sure. We don't want to give fake news here. Fake news. <laughs> I'm just a rookie. Let's see if uh, Hunter Robbins gives us a good celebration here. Maybe gives us a burnout. Decent little burnout on yeah. the Polish victory lap for yeah. Hunter Robbins. You He's know, last excited. night he was involved in that hard crash on the front stretch and thought that he might have banged up the wrist a little bit when he got out of the car. Yeah, actually, I was, I was messing with Ronnie Sanders this morning. You know, uh, I heard uh, 
uh, he might have hurt his wrist, and, and I was super upset about that. You know, Hunter is such a good guy, and I'm super happy for him and, and Johanna and everybody on that team and, and Josh, everybody on that team that does such a spectacular job, and those are really good people, especially being from here. This is their hometown race. Uh, for, for Hunter and Johanna. So I bet he's just super happy as he's showing that showing that right here. But uh, went so fast the cameraman couldn't keep exactly, up with him there, right? Exactly. He did a good shot job. Shot right tonight. out of the shot. Yeah, There's yeah. the 18. Well, it's going the wrong way. That's what it is. Hey, the 18 that's a good looking race car. You know, that, that paint scheme has been around for a while. Yeah, a few years. 18 of Hunter Robbins, an impressive run. Mike Hopkins, one spot short, second place. The celebration begins on the front straightaway at Five Flags Speedway. That's a happy team right there. You know, Josh and Hunter, I bet Hunter is super, super happy about that. Um, I bet his wrist feels better now. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah. Forgot he, about he, doesn't even, he doesn't even feel that wrist anymore. Hunter I, Robbins. I bet he's a little tired. Yesterday was a long race for, for everybody. We will send it down to victory lane to James Pike, who will have a word with our winner, Hunter Robbins. Adam, you made the point multiple times in the broadcast, 18 years between victories for Hunter Robbins and the Allen Turner Snowflake 100. We talked at the beginning of the race about experience versus youth and how there was a mix that we had at the front of the field at the end of this race. Experience won out. Top three drivers all pretty well versed in competition here at Five Flags Speedway. Maybe none more so than Hunter Robbins in victory lane putting on Who's your neck fan getting ready to receive the checkered flag? And shortly he will climb out as a two time champion of the Allen Turner Snowflake 100, Hunter Robbins, victorious this evening at Five Flags Speedway. <laughs> Crew coming in to celebrate. Hunter. This was not necessarily as easy as it looked. The stats will say this was a wire-to-wire, flag-to-flag win, but you had Mike Hopkins behind you for just about all of those 100 laps. So how did you manage the gap between his car and yours and maintain your pace over the course of the full race? Well, uh, I mean, I guess to be honest, I think when, once practice started, I mean, it was evident that uh, that us and the 15 had the best cars. And, uh, man, it was that was that was tough. Uh, I've had some really hard races this year with some guys. I mean, Jackson, uh, he's been really tough in the pro stuff. And, and I've been, the last couple of races down here, we haven't been nowhere near as good as him. And we've worked really hard. And, uh, and uh, just, uh, man, I mean, this, this, this was the same car we had last night. It just, last night's car, something went wrong with it, and, and we sucked. But, uh, but uh, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, we almost lost the lead that one time. It just textbook uh, being able to get back under him and get around him, and uh, it was just a really good car. I just can't thank Ronnie Sanders and my father-in-law Donald and my wife and uh, Josh and Ryan and Coach and Gene uh, Wayne, everybody that's uh, been with us all week. Uh, uh, this is we only lost one pro late model race all year. We finished second, and uh, uh, that's pretty cool. Your life has changed a lot since 2005. This race has changed a lot since 2005. From your perspective, how has the Snowflake 100 evolved and changed in the span between your two victories? Well, the first time, I mean, it was a six tire race and, and we won it by staying out. And uh, uh, Frank Grill was my crew chief or told us to stay out and we won the race. And, uh, uh, you know, this time we got Ronnie and uh, just, uh, uh, man, it's, uh, it's uh, the race has gotten, I mean, it's, it's hard. It's really, really hard. You just got to have the best car. And uh, um, with a four-tire race now, you just got to have the best car. We had the best car, and uh, I didn't want to lose. He did indeed have the best car. Hunter Robbins, your 2023 Allen Turner Snowflake 100 champion. I think the key move of the race, that crossover move, after Hopkins had a run on him, what was it, with 20 to go or so, he got yeah, underneath like him that. on the front stretch. He beat him into turn one, but he overshot the corner just enough to open up the inside lane. And Hunter Robbins, a dirt track type move, able to cross over, get back under him, coming off of turn two and take it back. If he doesn't do that crossover move right there, I don't think he wins. 
Yeah, that was a great move by Hunter Robbins. Obviously, he has a lot of experience at the racetrack and, and, and late models in general. He's been around for a long time. A uh, very smart guy. Uh, and that was a really good move to kind of put himself in position. We saw all night how important being on the bottom is and being on that yellow line all night is. So he knew that. And once Hunter uh, or Mike Hopkins got on the inside of him, he, he just let off a little bit earlier, try to roll into his bumper and get back onto the inside of his quarter panel and, and make that shot to pass him back. And, and that ended up working, and he ended up dominating the race. Back down, that point. back down to the front straightaway with Mike Hopkins. Mike Hopkins finished the second in the Allen Turner Snowflake 100. Mike, what was your strategy to try and attack Hunter for the race lead? Well, uh, I'll tell you, that uh, that was some fun racing with him. I got a hats off to him and his crew. They, they drove a heck of a race, and they we raced straight up. I just, I was a tick too tight getting down in, and he had enough drive, and I got a bone stock crate, and it just, you can't outpower one of them Fords, and that ain't an excuse. He drove a hell of a race. It just, uh, we need a little bit more drive to run with him. I thought I was going to have him once, and I tried to stay off him, and he got back around me. But, uh, hey, this place is tough to finish second. Nothing to hang our head about. Takes a lot of experience to get it right here at Five Flags. Mike Hopkins, second place at the Snowflake 100. Yeah, he's frustrated to a degree because he had a chance to win, but yeah. he's pretty happy that he finished second with a field of 57 cars that were here this week for the Snowflake. And it's taken that many years, 18 of them, in fact, for Hunter Robbins to get back in victory lane in the Snowflake. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing that Mike Hopkins should hang his head about right there. That was a great race, and he did a did a heck of a job. Um, we all knew he was a little too tight there to, to create that drive off that he needed to have. But he, he ran a really good race and put on a super good show for, for all the, the fans that came tonight and all the fans that joined uh, Racing America tonight as well. That was such a good race. Steven Nassi came from 28th to 3rd. Another good run tonight for the 51. James Pike is with him. 25 spots that Steven Nassie gained in the Allen Center Snowflake 100. But Steven, you needed this to be the Snowflake 125, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely felt like we needed some more laps there. We, we had a really good car, just had a long way to go and had a couple of great long green flag runs that I think kind of hurt us there. But, um, you know, all in all, it was a great weekend for me and my guys. This is, um, this is my car here and then my guys working on it. So it was, um, you know, a good feat for us. I really feel like we had the best car, just kind of running out of time. So, uh, you know, we'll come back next year, but definitely happy about it. Another vintage Five Flags performance from Steve Nassie. Might not have qualified well, but yet again, he races his way up towards the front, ends up with a podium in the Snowflake 100. Definitely a good run for Steven Nassi coming from deep in the field. Hunter Robbins claims the victory, his second Snowflake win. He's only one away from tying Augie Grill, who we always talk about having three Snowflake victories. Chase Elliott with three as well. Mike Hopkins finishes second, taking a look through our top ten. Impressive run for Max Cookson coming through the field, much like Steven Nassi to get a top ten run. Uh, Dylan Fetcho faded toward the end. Caden Honeycutt bringing home a top ten. Taking a look at positions 11 through 20. Luke Baldwin shown in the 11th position that was quite the rally for luke baldwin and he was able to come up and get 11th i where did he come from right yeah absolutely he did a did a good job to rebound uh as we talked about getting uh his mind back into the game and he did a uh, heck of a job with that john bolin there's bryson schaffer uh, chase burda finishing in 16th position looking at our next slate seeing dustin smith who just squeaked in by qualifying uh finishing 21st jared butcher uh, falling out finishing 26th and uh, the final six in our field tonight, Gavin Bushell, uh, bad luck uh, in that crash with Boston Oliver on the front straightaway, hit the inside wall, Terry Seneker. Problems with that car, uh, finishing 34th. He would have, I think, been up in the top 10, dicing it up 